we're here to bring you praise, Jesus. You ready to worship the Lord this morning? We're going to give you all we have. And I give you glory for all you brought me through. Oh, and now I'm ready for whatever you want to do. And I'm moving forward to follow after you. And now this morning because your presence is an open door oh, we want you Lord like never before yes we do your presence is an open door so come Wagner, who's sitting right there, had a diagnosis of stage four renal failure, and this week she found out from the doctors that she is completely healed. Come on, give him praise today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Oh my goodness. Okay, you can sit down now. Praise God. We may have to get my hand clapped later for that too. Man, we're so excited to be here today. Thank you for joining us. Whether you're watching online, in person, later at Kingdom Builders TV, we're so glad that you're here today. And if this is your first time, we want to let you feel welcome. Praise family, can we let all of our guests know we're glad they're here today? 
Awesome. Now, this is a special day. Our praise kids are in here with us. We're a family church. In fact, family is our middle name, and we really believe that we should minister to every member of the family on a level that they can understand. And so today we're all in here together to learn about what God is doing through our church, through your giving all around the world, particularly today in South Africa. I'm really excited about what's coming, and I know you're going to love it. So stay tuned for everything that's going to be going. Even if you're watching online today, let me encourage you, gather the kids around the TV, the computer, the phone, whatever you got, because today is going to be really cool and important. So make sure that you've got your uh, information. If you are first time and you didn't receive one of our guest cups on your way in, listen, it's a cup. It's awesome for a gift for you, but also you get a free coffee. There's a coupon for a free coffee in there. Who doesn't like free coffee? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, yeah. Okay, why don't we let you in here if you don't like? No, I'm just kidding. We're glad that you're here today and want to make sure that you know that. So if you uh, would like to get more information about how you can get a free gift from us or that free coffee, just see somebody in a How Can I Help Landyard, and they'll be happy to get it for you. We are sad to inform you that Family Sail Away 2022 has officially sold out. We're still hopeful that as COVID restrictions ease, the cruise line will increase the capacity allowed on each ship. This means that more rooms could eventually become available. If you missed out and you're still hoping a room opens up for you, fill out the form on our events page and we'll contact you if we receive word of any developments. On Wednesday, October 27th at 7 p.m., our Generations Department will be hosting a Praise Kids Trunk or Treat. If you have a child from Explorer's age to fifth grade, have them dress up in a costume and they can participate in this fun free event that will have pizza, candy, games, prizes, and all kinds of fall fun. PFC Young Adults is our ministry for 18 to 20-somethings and they meet twice a month to have free food and honest conversations about the issues and crucial decisions unique to early adulthood. Their next meeting is tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. You can fill out the form on our events page to get more information about getting involved in PFC Young Adults. Do you feel hope for your financial future or are you so consumed with money stress that you avoid the subject altogether? Ramsey Plus is designed to get you out of debt by giving you a plan to help you live in financial peace. That's why we recommend Ramsey Plus to all of our members so we can all learn how to live and give like no one else. Visit our events page to find out how you can get access to a two-week free trial of this life-changing financial program. You can find out more information, sign up, and pay for all of the events happening at PFC by visiting praisefamily.church forward slash events. We love to know who is with us in person and online today. The best way to sign in is by texting HERE to 313131. If it's your first time texting in with us, include your first and last name after the word HERE so we can be introduced. I'm going to invite you to stand. We're going to continue worshiping the Lord this morning. Yes, Lord, we're so thankful for all you've done for us, God. We come with hearts of gratitude and thankfulness. Christ, for even in your suffering, 
you saw to the other side no weakness was our salvation jesus for our sake you died yes and we give you our praise jesus we sing praise the father oh praise the son and praise the that stone was moved for good for the lamb that conquered death and the dead rose from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the father are restored and the church of christ was born and the spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of old it shall not kneel it shall not fade by his blood and in his name who oh, by his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me yes and we give you all praise all praise to you praise this morning yes we give you praise Jesus how oh, we thank you Jesus yes we thank you Jesus we fix our eyes on you we fix our eyes on you Jesus we thank you thank you for your redemption Lord we here to make room for you in our hearts this morning we bring you all we have. Jesus. Oh, yeah, have your way in me. Have your way in me, Jesus. You're all we want.
Father, have your way in this place today. Have your way in this place. I don't want to be guilty of just expecting God to do something. I just kind of sit back. You know, he's waiting for us to make room for him, to invite him. And, you know, he's ready to pour out. He's ready to do something mighty. But there are times in our life we just need to open our heart and say, Lord, shake up the ground. Look, just break up all the hardness. Lord, move and do what you will do. And when we'll open up, he says, I will move. I'll pour out. Are you ready for God to do whatever he wants to do in your life? Are you ready for no matter what it is? Lord, I'm not going to put any parameters on it. I'm not going to put any boundaries. I'm just going to let you do what you want to do. If you mean that, would you raise both hands right now? And we're going to sing that again. Shake up the ground. And make that a prayer. And let's open our hearts for what God wants to do in us and through us today. Come on. Can we do that together? Yes. We sing shake up the ground. Thank you. 
whatever you want to do. Would you make that your prayer? Just tell him, Lord, do whatever you want to in my life, in my family. Lord, in my job, in my plans, in my future, in my hopes and dreams, do whatever you want to do. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We'll make room. If you mean that, if you're ready for God to do what he wants to do, regardless of what it is, you say, I'm open. Would you give a big shout of amen? Come on, let's give him praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you say hi to a few folks or someone you don't know, introduce yourself before you're seated. When God called us to Rustenburg, South Africa, we were drawn by the plight of the orphaned and abandoned children left in the wake of the AIDS pandemic. Their hopeless faces were heartbreaking. We knew there must be something we could do. Although the need was overwhelmingly great, we knew that our God was greater. Unexpectedly, God led us to plant Hope Church in Freedom Park just outside the city of Rustenburg. It's a community of extreme poverty in desperate need of the hope that Jesus offers. God needed to give us a season of building relationships, learning the cultures, and setting down roots in the country that we were learning to love. also established another South African NPO called Hope Outreach to facilitate orphan care. At the beginning of this year, we broke ground for a baby and toddler home. With the work continuing while we are in the States, it's our goal that the building will be completed by April of 2022. We're certainly thrilled and honored to have some special guests with us today. You see the kids from Praise Kids are in here today because these folks have a really unique ministry, and I'm not going to try to steal their thunder, but we got to know them several years ago, and they've become friends, and we just enjoyed the first service so much. And what they're doing in, in, in one of the neediest, uh, not just poverty-wise, but in the area of children and family ministry is just incredible, and it's so unique to South Africa because there's not a lot of that going on there. So would you help me welcome this morning our great friends and heroes, Jeff and Abby, Abby Hunt and their family. family. Come on. Yeah. Amen. You may be seated. I'm Jeff. This is Abby. Hello. Didn't realize you were waiting for me. Sorry. This is Beth Elizabeth. She's our firstborn. Would you like to say hello as well? Hi. And Elizabeth's middle name is what, Elizabeth? Did you forget? No. <laughs> it's Melon. And what does that mean? You did forget, didn't you? <laughs> Faith. 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 Yes. Good job. And this is Jordan. And Jordan. 
And, and Jordan's middle name is Mohau. How do you, what, what does Mohau mean? Grace. Grace. So, so Elizabeth, stand up Elizabeth. Elizabeth to Melo. So Elizabeth means God's promise. And uh, uh, to Melo means faith, God's promise of faith. And Jordan means flowing down. So flowing down grace. We, 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 we did the weird family and child meaning name thing. So, but but we, we uh, wanted to give them something that they would take the rest of their lives throughout the world, wherever the God takes them, that is from Africa. So they have African middle names um, because we love Africa so much. And, and this morning, we would like to sing a song. Now, I, I understand uh, as talking to pastor after the, the, the first service, some of you may know this song, which is good because it isn't a foreign language. Um, and then the name of the song is? Avula Kile Amasango. Shall we try that? Avula Kile Amasango. Go ahead now. Avula Kile Amasango. Oh, very good. Does anyone know what that means? Nobody. Nobody. I took no Swana first people for the. Remember. Avula. Do you know what it means? No. The, the gates of heaven are open. Amen? The gates of heaven are open. Isn't it nice to know that when, when COVID came, God didn't decide he needed quarantine? Yeah. I'm go to heaven and shut the gates. The gates are open. They are open for you and they're open for me. Blessings can still come down from heaven. So we are going to sing this song with you. And there's some motions that go along with this. And, and we would like you to, 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 to sing it African style. So that means... You know, you're going to have to move a little bit, okay? This is not considered dancing for those of you who came from the church when, when dancing was bad. This is not dance. Plus, I saw some dancing over here. Whoa. All right. So, sorry. What? Oh, they need to stand up. Oh, can you guys stand up, please? Okay, now, now here's the thing. Avula Kile Amasango, that's not your part, okay? That might have been difficult for you to say, so we're going to say that. But here's your part. Amen. Pretty easy, eh? Now, for the meaning of that, I don't know what it means. But what I think it means is that it's, a, it's an exclamation of joy because the gates of heaven are still open to us, okay? So, you ready? Okay. Now, just watch for the, for the motions, and, and you'll, you'll be fine. Okay, you ready? You got it? Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 yo ho, amen. I walk here on the sun go. Ay, 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 yo ho, amen. Abu the kile on sun go. Ay, 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 ay. I, 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 okay, stop, stop. I saw some people not putting their arms on and doing the I, 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 is very good. And now these guys over here, these guys were doing it really well. So maybe, I, mean, I probably should bring them up here and show the adults how to do it. You guys are doing great. Okay, so we're going to sing it one more time. Hey, 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 relax there, youngster. Um, cool. <laughs> We're going to do it one more time, let you redeem yourself, adults. Because some of you, not good. Okay? You ready? Abu the Kile Amasango. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah! Yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Ay, 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 ay. Yo ho. Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. You can be seated. Jordan and Beth, you guys can take seats. Jordan, go on this way, buddy. <laughs> you get kids up and on stage in front of people, you don't know what's going to happen. But we are excited to be here. We, uh, we, we, have, uh, we send you greetings from uh, Gail and Neville Fannin. Some of you remember them from Jackson's Ridge. Uh, before we left, we, I talked with them, and they said, hey, make sure you greet those fine folks there. We, we appreciate them greatly, so we send them your greetings, or we send you their greetings. So um, God, God is good, and, and when Abby and I and the children decided, well, actually, it was just Abby and I, the children hadn't come along yet, and we, we decided to go to South Africa 12 years ago, God laid this, this scripture on our hearts. And the scripture begins by this. It says, it's John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. All right? How many of you know who? Uh, you guys look smart over here. Who, who knows who the thief is? Oh, you had your hand up first. The devil. He's the thief. And he is looking to steal and to kill and to destroy you. Did you know that? Well, when we got to South Africa, we noticed an area that, that we saw the thief working overtime. And it's a place called Freedom Park. And, and I need someone to help me illustrate this, this work that the devil's doing. Young man, right here, you raise your hand. Come on up. Very nice. What kind of... That, oh, that's a nice jacket there, huh? Okay. What is your name? Daniel, Daniel, what, what, what story in the Bible, Daniel, do you know a story in the Bible that has a Daniel in it? The lion's den. Yeah, 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 that one. That's a good one, isn't it? Daniel and the lion's den. We're not going to talk about that today, though. But what we're going to do is I'm going to give you an opportunity to show off your acting ability. Okay? Are you a pretty good actor? Kind of. Okay. First thing of acting, first rule is you got to make sure you don't turn your back on the audience. The audience is right there. So turn around, face them, smile pretty, Daniel, or handsomely. And what we're going to do is we're going to use these chains to illustrate the devil stealing from the children of South Africa, okay? So these chains, even though they're very light, we want them to the audience, we want them to believe that they're heavy, okay? So I'm going to put these on your wrist. These are the first ones that are going to go on your wrist. So you're going you're gonna, to, then when it gets on your wrist, then your acting kicks in. Oh, and you go like that. Oh, can you do that? Let's try it one time. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, oh, I didn't hear you. Okay, so I'm going to give you another shot. You ready? So the first way that the, the devil steals, kills, and destroys in South Africa is through HIV AIDS. HIV AIDS, it's still very uh, prevalent that side. You don't hear about it a whole lot anymore in, in America. But, but South Africa is considered the capital of HIV because we have the largest number per capita uh, number of cases in, in our country. So it, it is a huge thing, and it affects all the children in South Africa. All right, you ready? You ready? Daniel, you ready? Put your arms up. Oh! Wait a minute, I didn't hear you. Here, let me bring the mic down so that they can hear you. Ready? One, two, three. Ugh! Okay, good, 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 good. The second way, the second way is through poverty. And, and you saw a little bit of from the video, you see from the pictures that are up on the screen, uh, some of the homes that, that some of our people in, in Freedom Park live in. Tin shacks, no running water, no electricity, not knowing if they're going to have a meal or how many meals they will have in a day. And, and poverty affects many of the children in South Africa. So let me put this chain on you, and it's going to go around by your neck. You ready? Uh, uh, hey, look at, oh, there you go. You're getting it. You're getting it. Stick with it. 
poverty. The third chain, the third chain is crime. Crime. Many of our children that live in, in Freedom Park um, are, are affected by crime on a daily basis. Many of them, as they're, they're walking home from church, they'll be looking over their shoulder to see if someone is following them, to see if there's a predator who is coming after them. Crime is a major issue in South Africa. All right, you ready? Ugh, okay, all right, good. But you know, Jesus didn't stop with the thief. Jesus continued on, didn't he, in that scripture? Jesus said, I have come that you would have what? Life. And not just life, but life to the full. Life to the full. Jesus doesn't want you just to live. He wants you to live a full life. Amen? And, and the great thing is that, that, that crime and poverty, Jesus is our protector, right? Amen? Poverty, not having, having things, Jesus provides for us, right? HIV, AIDS, and sickness, TB, what have you, Jesus is our healer, right? Daniel, well done, young man. Thank you very much. I have something for you. There you go. Thank you. You may be seated. And you see, life to the full isn't just, isn't, isn't having a big car, isn't having a big house, isn't having lots of money, isn't having lots of friends. Those, now, don't, don't get me wrong. Those things are still good, Okay. But life to the full is living a life with Jesus. Amen? Living a life with Jesus. So we have gone into Freedom Park, and, and God put it on our heart to, to, to start a church there called Hope Church. And we are sharing Jesus with our friends in Freedom Park so that they also, in their situation, can live life to the full with Jesus. And we have... Uh, on a Sunday, we would, ha we would have about uh, 35 to 40 adults and also uh, 75 to 100 kids come and hear about Jesus. Thanks. You know, when we first, like you saw in the video, when we were first called to South Africa, it was the, the cry of the orphan that really caught our hearts and, and really was why we wanted to go to South Africa to begin with. And, you know, we had this, we had this picture in our mind of what it was going to look like to follow Jesus in South Africa. We, we had imagined, uh, we, had, we knew missionaries there that were, had been established already. We were going to work with them. They had a home for children. There was about 20 kids there. We were going to go help them because we are helpers. Right? We are children's pastors. We were going to teach kid, people how to teach kids. We were going to take care of babies. That's what we were going to do. Um, yeah, that's not exactly how it all began or how it all continued because we had this amazing picture of what it would look like, but God did not color in the lines that we drew for how it was going to look to serve him. Has that ever happened to you? Like, I know that I know that God sent us there to take care of children. And yet, one of the first things we did when we arrived was to help close Lighthouse Children's Shelter. Oh, man, that's not what we signed up for. That's not what we were going there for. But we know that Psalm 37 says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So we stepped into Freedom Park. We established Hope Church. And little by little, it just seemed like more and more of the picture that we had in our mind was disappearing. And yet God was opening these amazing doors in Freedom Park. And, and we were so excited to follow him. And at the same time, we just... We didn't know what to do with what we thought it was going to look like to serve him. Now, some exciting things started happening in Freedom Park. I mean, we prayed for a couple of months that God would send us a pastor to Freedom Park. Looking back now, I can almost picture God kind of smiling like, yep, I did. You catching up? Come on. Come on. It's coming. There you go. Start the church. Good job, guys. Good job. Um, and, and so we did, and exciting things are happening. Uh, people were getting saved. Jeff told you children are coming, adults are coming. I want to tell you about a lady named Masibulelo. She came to me a few months ago after church one day and said, Pastor Abby, I have this terrible problem. 
uh, mama, you have to help me because something horrible has happened and I don't know what I'm going to do. It's, I have so much stress. I just can't, I can't imagine how I'm going to get past this. And, oh, okay, like I've got my, I, I, I'm ready. Tell me, how can I help? She says, I'm pregnant. It took me a minute to catch up because that doesn't sound like bad news to me, right? But she explained, you know what, I've got these other two kids and I don't know how to feed them and, and, and we, we have so little and I don't know how to help uh, them and, and I just, I know we can't have another baby. There's no way we're going to survive with another baby to feed. So, so she said, I, I'm so stressed about this. I just want to, I just, I just wish I could just get rid of this baby inside of me. Will God forgive me? And it took me a second, and I said, absolutely, God will forgive you. Because our God is great, and he will forgive you. And that is not your only option. This is not your only option. So, uh, you know, it's, it's easy to tell people about Jesus. It's easy to tell people about how we forgive sins. It's harder to walk through life with people. Discipleship is harder and messier and ickier. So I took her to a pregnancy resource center, and we talked about what her options are, and she said, there's no way I can do, no way I can do adoption. Because if I keep this baby inside of me, my husband's going to fall in love with the baby, and my kids are going to want the baby. Like, we, we love babies. We want more. I, I can't do that. We can't afford it. There's no way this is going to happen. So we walked through some different steps with her, uh, going to get the paperwork she needed to be able to access some government money, and just praying with her and saying, you know what? You're, you're already taking steps in the physical to make sure you can't be pregnant. So that means supernaturally God made this happen. And so that means he has this idea. And she said, no, but, but this is what my family is supposed to look like. And, and I don't have room in my family for another baby. It doesn't look the way it's supposed to look to follow Jesus. And you know what? Just kept talking to her about the steps that she could take. And, and little by little, she started trusting God. She started trusting Jesus to, to put the pieces together for her. And, and she started getting excited. And she told her husband that the baby was coming, and he's really excited. And she told her kids that there's a baby coming, and they're really excited. And, and she's taking all the steps that she needs to. And just before we uh, left to come back here to the States, uh, she found out that she's having twins. So I don't know what God is doing for her, but I do know that our God is amazing. And as we take steps with him, just take the next step. He's so faithful to come through and to show us how we can follow him better. And for us in South Africa, it has been, we've been in South Africa 12 years now. And when we first went, we held on to that verse, Psalm 2, verse 8. Ask of me and I will give you the nations as your inheritance. And we said, God, give us a nation of orphans. And little by little, as he took apart the... Uh, the picture that we had in our minds, we realized that he wasn't actually taking apart a picture, but that he was opening a, a new picture, a different picture, a better picture of what it could look like to follow him. And a few years ago, or a couple years ago now, I guess, about two years ago, God opened the door for us, for Engage Africa, to purchase property in Rustenburg. So here's a picture of the property that we have. The one in white there is our land, um, Engage Africa's land, God's land in Rustenburg. And there's a community nearby, Denny Estates, that's very similar to Freedom Park. So that's exciting because we, we now already can see what God could do in a community like that. And, and we realize that God is painting an even bigger, better picture of what we thought it was going to look like to follow him. And now he's got this vision of Hope Outreach for us that includes certainly a baby home, but also um, a, a church campus and, and uh, gen sorry, <laughs> sustainable income. I'm getting so excited. I'm ahead of myself. And after school programs and ongoing education for adults and um, community gardening and so many things that we never would have pictured when we first went over there to take care of 20 babies and teach people how to teach children. And now God has painted this incredible picture for us and we get to help do what he wants to do. And the first step is that children's home. The first step is to build a home for babies and toddlers. And so uh, th this is, these are pictures of breaking ground on that uh, shelter, and now this is what it looks like right now. This week, I believe the roof is going on while we are here in the state, so that's exciting. And during next year, 2021, is our year of finishing and furnishing the baby home. So we need about $60,000 to finish and furnish the home. 
after the roof goes on and windows go in. That's, that's all we should be finished by the time we get there. We have $20,000 so far, so we're looking for another $40,000 by the end of this year to be able to spend next year finishing and furnishing the home. So I know some of you are sitting there going, okay, I'm ready. What can we do? How can we do it? Well, there's three things that you can do, right? You can pray, you can give, you can go. Everybody say three things. Three things. Pray, give, go. Pray, give, go. You're already praying for missionaries. We want you to keep praying for missionaries and add us to your list. You're already giving to missions, which means you're already part of what God is doing. And hopefully, you are able to start going because here's what we know. God uses people that are already in motion. So you want to get involved with what's going on in South Africa? Great. Get involved in your community and see what God will do. And then he'll move you step by step because God uses people that are already moving. Here's an easy way to remember how to pray for us. We are the Hunt family, Jeff and Abby Hunt. When you're driving around, you might see trucks that look like this. J.B. Hunt, not our cousin. It would be delightful, but they are not our cousin. But when you see their name, remember our name and pray, Jesus bless the Hunts and the children of South Africa and Hope Church and all the things that he will bring to your mind. Because once you start praying, how many of you know it tends to go a little longer than you thought, right? Jesus bless the Hunts can be the rest of your drive to wherever you're going, so that's great. So pray for us. We pray for you, and that is how we partner together in missions, because when we pray, God moves. Now, I could go on and on talking about what's happening in South Africa. At the same time, we, the Hunt family, we are people, disciples like you. So I would love to take a little bit of time and just share with you what God has been teaching us over this past uh, year or so. Whenever we come back to the States, we just like to be able to share a word of encouragement about what God has been speaking to us. Because it's amazing how when God speaks to us in South Africa, he's often saying the same thing here in America. So I just want to tell you what he's been revealing to us. This year, more than ever before, we have noticed that things are really at odds, especially here in America. There are more topics that are dividing people than ever before. I mean, people are rioting, and I mean, we're used to seeing that in South Africa. We, we have riots, you know, about all kinds of things. But now we're, we're seeing this in America as well. We're seeing out there in the world, people are fighting about everything. And in here in the church, people are fighting about everything. And, and, and it just seems like we, we've kind of, the, our whole world has kind of walked into a battle zone. We are lift, 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 right, lift, of a battle. lift, lift, do you, do you hear lift, that way? right, lift, it, lift, that way? lift, oh. lift, right, lift, oh, lift, lift, mm -hmm. lift, right, lift. Um, <laughs> excuse me just a second. Hi, how Hi. are you? Good. Who are you? I'm 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 private born. Born, like like Jason born. I've heard of Jason born. Oh yeah, Jason's my brother. Seriously? Yes. That's so cool. Yeah, he's a plumber. M maybe not the same. Oh, a different Jason. born. Anyway. Um, okay. What are you doing here? Well, I was. <laughs> I was on my way to a training, and I think I took a left when I should have taken a right, because I struggle with that left and right stuff sometimes. It's hard. It's hard. And, and I just ended up here. Oh, okay. Well, you're in training for, like, for a battle? Like, oh, are you going to war The or military, ma'am. The military. Can't you tell by the outfit? Right. You look uh, very military. The Army. <clears throat> National Guard. I see. I see. Okay, so we are actually talking about uh, Battle Zone as well. You are. We are. Well, Maybe not the same kind that you're involved in, though. Oh. Yeah, here, check this out. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12 says, e Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Here we go. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood but against rulers and authorities and powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Mm -hmm. Heavenly realms. Heavenly huh? realms, that's right. Ooh, authorities of the dark world. You seem a little confused. What kind of church have I come into here? Are they. What? 
mean, what are you? Is this ghost and crazy well, things? Well, no, not what is, ghosts. I mean, what is this all about? Well, see, this world that we see all around us, it's not the only world we live in. We have an enemy, Satan, and we can't see him, but he's always against us. Oh. Always. And that is like an invisible war. Oh. So check it out. Maybe this has happened to oh. you. This past year okay. in our family, it seems like every single project, everything we've done feels harder. It takes longer. It costs more. Everything seems more difficult. It's it's like there's this invisible force pushing against everything we try to do and making it harder. Yeah, Have it's been kind of like work? that everywhere, I think, where <laughs> things are just a little bit crazy. People are arguing and fighting and protesting. and Yeah, yeah. yeah. and this COVID thing, wow, just wow, right? well, amazing things happening. That invisible pressure is the spiritual realm. This flesh and blood world is not our only world, okay. but it's the spiritual world. And so if we're going to be in a spiritual realm, in a spiritual battle, we need a spiritual battle strategy. Okay. Mm -hmm. You so, know about battle strategy. I know about battle strategy, okay. ma'am. I do. I know lots of strategies. Do you? Okay. Just don't ask me them right now. Okay. Uh, All right. We, but we I won't know ask a lot you. of them. They're top secret military That's right. I'd, information. I'd, yeah. Uh-huh. Well, we have spiritual battle strategies as well. The first strategy, when we know that we are in the midst of a war, and, and we are, <laughs> because no matter what's happening in this world that we see, there is a spiritual battle happening behind it. Hmm. So when that happens, we need to remember God's power. Remember oh. God's power. Everybody say, remember God's power. Remember God's power. That's right. Now, now, wait a minute. What? What God are we talking about? Are we talking about the God that created heaven and earth? That's right. Uh, the is one that true the God? God. We're not talking about Buddha and Hare Krishna and the one all true those God, other guys. We're talking about the earth, one ruler of the universe. Created heaven and earth. Because mm -hmm. that's pretty powerful there. It is Just very that powerful. in itself is but amazing. But not only that, he actually cares about what's happening every day. Jesus told us three different times in the Bible, in three different places in the Bible, that with man it's impossible, but with God all things mm. are possible. Nothing is impossible with God. He is so powerful. Hmm. And when we feel like we're overwhelmed in battle, we have to remember God's power. Because that can strengthen us as well. Can I tell you a story? Yeah, I like stories. Do you like stories? Yeah. It's yeah. a war story. Do you guys like stories? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is this is this like the, the, the section for the short people? What? How come on the, the short people are all over? Oh, your kids. Oh, I'm sorry. You're supposed to be that short. Good looking, though. You look, you're looking good. They're made good. that way. Mm -hmm. So we're good at the story? Yeah, let's do it. It's a true it. story. It's a true war story. I love this story. It's one of my favorites in the Bible. And I love Bible stories because not only did they really happen, but they remind us of the incredible power of our God. So you remember the Israelites. Is that a familiar word? Yes. Israelites? Yes, the Israelites. Nation of Israel, at this time in history, they're divided. So we've got the northern kingdom of Israel, southern kingdom of Judah, Jehoshaphat. Ooh, is that's the king. a fun name. Isn't that a fun name? Jehuzamat. No, Jehoshaphat. Jehizamu. So close. No. Jehoshaphat is a good and strong king, and he loves the Lord. But he got really bad news one day. Messengers came to King Jehoshaphat and said, Your Majesty, we are in big trouble. I mean, uh -oh. big trouble. Oh, there boy. are three different armies, three different countries that are coming toward us and they're going to attack at the same time. They're coming from the north, from the east, from the south. They're all going to converge on Judah, attack us, and we are not strong enough to, def to defend ourselves against them. Oh boy. They will beat us. It is impossible. Yeah, Jehoshaphat didn't know what in the world he was going to do. He, he wanted to lead his people well, but he didn't know the answer. He knew his army wasn't strong enough, but he remembered God's power. So he called the people together to pray. He said, oh, Lord, God of our ancestors, you alone are the God who is in heaven. You are ruler of all the kingdom of the earth. You are powerful and mighty. No one can stand against you. Mm. He knew how powerful God was, or God is, and God will be. He knew the power of God. And this is my favorite thing that he said. He said, we don't know what to do, 
but our eyes are on you. Oh, wait a minute. What? That was the king? Yes, that the was the king. The king said he didn't know what to do. He did. He is the leader of the country, and he said he didn't know what to do. Yeah. Boy, it'd sure be nice if we could get some leaders that would say that, huh? <laughs> My goodness. Or at least We to don't say, know what to do, guys, but we're but going to follow. But our eyes are on you. Yeah. He knew that God was the one who was going to get them out of this because he also knew the second strategy for being in a spiritual war. We need to remember God's power and also remember God's promises. Oh. When we remember God's oh. promises... We can stand on them. Yeah, but wait a minute. What? People promise me stuff all the time, okay. and then they never follow through. I don't want a God that's just going to promise stuff. I want a God that I know is going to follow through. Well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, because I can tell you're kind of a see-it-to-believe-it kind of guy. Well, but you know see what? it and believe it. As Christians, we can be see-it-to-believe-it kind of people, because God has shown us what he has done. When we read the accounts of what he's done in the Bible, we can know that he'll do that for us too. When we hear testimonies of what God has done to other people, like, did you hear the testimony this morning what? of an no. amazing healing? Right there? Walking miracle that lady right, right there, there in the middle of the room. Wow. Yes, because she knows God's promises. When we hear what God has done for someone else, we say, yes, that promise is for me. So, so then when, when we're sick, when we're injured, when we need something, yeah then we can stand on the, we can know God's promise about healing. Healing? Yeah, when we're sick. You mean when you're sick and hurt and stuff? Yeah, because I no, heard I about her being sick, and no. so I, I know that God. I've got right can... here in my bag, what? this is my official yeah. Illinois National Guard okay. bag right there. Illinois, you are a long way from home. I know, it was a bad turn. Talk about bad a wrong turn. turn. Oh that. my goodness. Yeah. Ooh, okay. I got it right here. Yep. What you got? This here mm -hmm. solves all the problems right there. So when you're sick or injured, you just yep, need a box you just like this. Pull that box out. It okay, takes well, care of you. I mean, that's a good resource. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to have. We have physical bodies. We need physical things to help our bodies. That's great. We use all the resources available, but we need to understand that there's only one source for all of the resources that we have here on earth. And uh -huh. that's our God. He is our healer and he promises. So we can hold on to that promise and say, yes, I remember that. And I trust him to keep doing it. Or, or when, when we're really in need and we need provision, we need a promise that says, I know I can hold on to God for my provision. So what you're saying is, is that this is good and we still want to use those yes. things. But we also have to have to appeal to the healer who can heal us. That's right. We use what's available here in the physical world, and we remember that we don't just Dual. exist in the physical world. We exist in the spiritual world, and God, our healer, is the source okay. for anything that helps us. That makes sense to right? me. Right? Yeah, we got lots of promises. Does that make sense to you guys? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so that the same sense. thing happens when we're in need, and we need provision. Provision. Got you covered there on the provision. Okay. There is nothing else that you need. I know, I know this God stuff is good, but this provision right here mm -hmm. will take care of you. This is an official MRE. Ugh. That, uh, yeah. What, what, uh, I'm sorry. What's wrong? Did I say that out loud? That does not look nice. What, we, no, this is, this is chicken noodles in vegetable sauce. Oh, well, it doesn't I'm look sure like the this is amazing. My mama used to make. I'm sure that that's amazing. Enough calories there for a whole day. Wow. Okay. Yep. Well, MRE, right from the Meal army. ready to eat. Yes. Yep. Perfect. That looks yummy. Yep. Okay. So, so go with me on this. It's important that we have physical provision in the physical world that we live in. Right. At the same time, this is not the only world we live in. So we need to also recognize that our provider is our God. And when we hear testimonies of God providing for other people, we go, yes, that promise is for me as well. And so okay. we stand on his promises. Or when we are in trouble and we need to be rescued, we have promises. Rest oh, rescued. You said the right I, I word. I said the right word. I just okay. happened to what have in here. Uh -huh. This is the best thing for getting rescued. Oh, boy. This here, I found this on Amazon, and I was like, oh, i got to have it. Boy, you can find anything there, huh? Yep. 
See there, you got you got some lights. Amazon Smile. And See if if I'm in happen. trouble mm -hmm. on the paintball field, if I'm in trouble, yeah. I just light this up. Oh. And my partners, my fellow comrades in mm -hmm. arms, they come and, and help me. And and rescue? and, and okay. you know if I'm in the field and. And, and it's an airplane, I just put it up there. I see. Because, see, it's got a little magnet on the back. Uh-huh. And, and it, and, and it you, Another thing that I use this for, mm -hmm. and, and some of you guys might want to get one of these, um, when, when we're running a little low, the rations, in the refrigerator, I, I go ahead and I put this on the refrigerator just to let my wife know that we're, there's an emergency happening. We need to Do you fill know? that thing up. And how does that so, work for you? Well, it has I mean, a, that is a great tool. Yes, yeah. that's a great resource. We use our resources here on Earth, and we recognize that we do not only live here in the physical, but we have a spiritual world that we live in, and we rely on God, our rescuer, to step in and provide the resources we need. See, we remember mm. God's promise, power. We remember God's promises, and, and, you know, sometimes it can feel hard to really connect with those promises or access the promises. Like, you know, I know that God provides healing and I know God provides rescue, but how do I really tap into the promises of God? But well, God gives us tools. Wait, wait a minute. I don't mean to interrupt you again, but I'm going to because I think I have another tool here. Oh, you got a tool? That, well, I was going to talk that about was, tool. That oh. This tool can help you well, connect. See, this is, okay. this is my calendar. It says, uh, I want you. It's, it's an official army calendar. It's very impressive. Got that online, but don't tell anybody. So, but this is the, these, these circle dates are the dates that I meet with my commander. Oh. And I get connected with him and because he wants to, you know, speak into, into what we're doing and how we're doing it mm -hmm. and, and make sure that we're all on the same page. You've heard of that before. All, all on, on the, the same, same page. page. I've heard of that, so, yes. Uh, yeah, this is this is very so, important. So these are the days that you are allowed to connect with your commander in chief. That's right. Face to face. Face to face. Well, that's one of the tools that we have to access the promises of God is to to be in His presence. He's our commander in chief. So yeah. we have time with our commander in chief as well. We we call it worship. That face to face time. Do you with have our a calendar to meet with God? I don't have a calendar. What? Because, Why not? You know what? I don't need a calendar. Oh, oh. No, because God's presence, we sang about this this morning, his presence is an open door. God wants us in his presence anytime that we want to. Anytime we want, we can access the presence of God. Like midnight, midnight two in the morning, awake. you're struggling. You, God can, God's He wants there. us he's in available. his presence. But you know what? It's wow. not just about being in his presence. See, when we worship, when we praise, that is a powerful force in the spiritual realm. Here's one of my favorite verses. Jesus quoted this verse, Matthew 21, 16. Jesus is quoting Psalm 8, 2, and it says this, from the mouths of children and infants, God has established praise because of his enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. What? Oh my goodness, that means when we worship, when we praise, Satan has to be quiet. Yeah. He, is, he cannot speak. It silences the enemy when we worship. That is but, an incredibly powerful thing. But that scripture says children and infants. Come on. It does. In a battle? Yes. Right? God uses children and infants in a battle? Oh yeah. The, these guys These right guys? Here, these oh, guys are a like powerful ready. force in the kingdom of God. Wow. When they worship... When they praise, their enemy has to be quiet just as much as when anyone of any height oh. worships or praises. God's enemies are silent in the presence of worship. Now, wow. we can be singing and not really worshiping. How many of you ever done that on a Sunday morning? Never mind, don't raise your hands. But when we are truly in the presence of God, Satan is quiet. So when we're hearing all those lies coming at us, I can't do this, I'm overwhelmed, it's too much, I'm, I'm, I'm no good. When we praise, when we worship, that enemy has to be silenced. That's a powerful force. Wow. Jehoshaphat knew about this force. You want to get back really? to the story? Oh, Did yeah, you think yeah, I'd forgotten? See, I haven't see, forgotten. Let's hear what happened to Jehoshaphat. What so happens. Jehoshaphat goes before God and he prays, of course, uh, you know, Lord, I don't know what to do. 
but our eyes are on you. And here's the thing, God answered and God said through a prophet, the prophet says, the word of the Lord is, get yourselves ready. Tomorrow, march down. He gave him the exact location and take up your positions. Stand firm and I will fight for you. The deliverance will be yours. Watch and see what God will do. Don't be afraid. Don't be discouraged. The Lord will be with you. Okay. So Joshua said, okay, I believe it. God said it. I believe it. Let's do this. So he tells the people, get ready. We are going to battle. We don't know when God's going to step in, but he's going to step in. So we're going. So get ready. So he gets the army ready. Yeah. Guess who he puts out right in the front? Oh, I know this. Okay. He puts a line of tanks. Boom, 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 boom. This is a little bit before tanks in history. No, No tanks. He's got an airborne division that comes over and bombs. It's a little bit before airplanes in history. We don't we don't have airplane or bombs. Uh, does he uh, uh, bow and arrow? Does yes, he, archers. We archers. do have archers at this point. Does he in send history. the archers first, but that's or? not who went out first. Well, who not went the out first? Not the archers. He sent the choir. <laughs> he sent the worship leaders. He sent the singers. People were the, the people who would sing and lead in praise and worship in the temple. That's who he sent out. Uh, why are you laughing? This is an amazing story. He sent the choir boys out first. They can't do anything. Well, you got to take the, the trained men. You think so? Yes, yeah, send them out. No, you just, just listen up a minute. So the choir goes out first. The praisers, the worshipers, the instruments, they go out. The army's still coming because God said, take up your position. So the army's coming too. We're all going out. And while they're still busy coming, something was happening to the three armies that were gathering where God said they would gather. They were laughing, weren't they? They were laughing. Oh, they, they were, were laughing? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, come on now. They started to get confused. So... Army number one attacked army number two. Okay. Army number two attacked army number three. Army number three didn't know what was happening. They attacked army number one, and they just kept on fighting with each other. Israel, well, Judah, is marching. They're singing. They're dancing. They're praising. They're worshiping because God promised victory. So they're worshiping because they believe it. So they're celebrating their victory. So they get to where God said to go, and they look out, and there was not a single Soldier standing from all of the enemy armies. They were all dead. Boom. They God took care confused of themselves. them and they all killed themselves. The enemy took care of himself. Can you believe it? Wow. I know. There is incredible power in worship and in that second tool. That was in there too. I don't know if you, you caught that. There was another tool in that story. There was another tool? There was another story? tool, yeah. yeah what, did you what, catch what, it? What, no, I didn't. What was it? Didn't it? What was the tool? It was a communication tool. What? Oh, uh-huh. yeah, I've got a communication tool for you. Oh, you think of course you. You, you think you know everything in your Bible, but mm-hmm. I got some stuff. Here, this what? tool right here, this uh-huh. is a walkie-talkie. A walkie-talkie. Army-issued walkie-talkie. I, this I, is I, how I communicate with my commander, and I can communicate. Huh. So we all have these walkie-talkies. I think I used one of those when my children were babies. No, 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 no. Ma'am, it may look like it's a baby monitor, but this is the disguise. This is a genius. This is as if it is in camouflage. Uh This is a walkie-talkie. So so it's very important that I have this with me at all times. Okay. So that I can communicate. Well, our communication device, well, maybe, maybe, maybe you know already. Did you pick it up in the story? How do we communicate with our commanding officer? We pray. That's right. The short people. The short people knew it. A few of the tall people knew it too. Good job. Yeah, we pray. That is one of the tools that God has given us to access his promises. When we remember his power, we remember his promises, the tools that he gives us to access those promises, worship and prayer, because prayer is not just talking to God. Hmm. It's hearing from God. And it's banding together with other believers to stand before the throne of God and say, no, this is what we believe. We trust you. We need you. Intervene on our behalf. Prayer is a powerful thing. Wow. I know. It's amazing. I need to pray more, I think. (laughs) Don't we all? Anybody feel like, whoa, I need to pray more? Yeah, for sure. 
Well, there's one, well, the Bible tells us that the, sorry, that through prayer, there's a verse that I want to tell you about that Jesus said, let me just check my notes because you've got me all confused here. Oh, Jesus says, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will become yours. Oh. Prayer is so, prayer and belief. Belief. See, it's easy for us to believe that God will forgive our sins, but believing what he said is harder. Believing yeah. that he'll keep his word is harder. Believing that he'll answer when we talk to him, that's harder. But yeah. it's so, so powerful. Yeah. So prayer, uh, yes, prayer and worship are really powerful tools to access God's promises. There's just one more tool yeah. that I want to talk about. You're, you know what? It's amazing. I have the same number of tools in my bag that you have. Huh, and this is, this is probably the most important tool uh, of course army issue of course <clears throat> national guard and all you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying the the field manual for hand-to-hand -hand combat whoa so, field yeah. manual well uh, careful these, there don't hurt yourself these have been licensed or, or me with the national guard in illinois as uh weapons have they so yeah i've read this inside and out mm -hmm. and there's nothing that'll put you to sleep faster Field but manual. uh it is some amazing stuff in there well we have a field manual in our spiritual war as well we have a book that gives us instructions about how to fight the battle it tells us about who our commanding officer is it talks about our place and what he thinks of us, it tells us how to stand against our enemy. You know what? I bet a lot of these people brought their field manual with them. If you've got your you field manual with one? you, hold that who's up got, for me so I can see Who's got their it. field manuals? I see people it's holding right up their... It's on a phone. They're I, holding up their cell phones. Well, that's because you can download... How is that a field manual? You can download the entire field manual on oh, your phone okay, and okay. access it anytime. It's, right. it's amazing technology, really. Okay. Yeah. So the Bible... The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. The Bible is our field manual. In that Bible, we have access to encouragement. We learn about healing. There are testimonies, stories of God's power connecting with us. It, it is God's letter of people who knew him and walked with him and experienced him, and they wrote down everything so that we could look back and know how he wants us to be. Ephesians chapter 6 calls our field manual yeah. the sword of the spirit. It's a manual Whoa. and a weapon, sharper than a two-edged sword. The Bible is an incredible tool that we have to access God's promises. Wow. I know. There, this, has been, this has been good for me. I'm, 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 I'm learning glad. that there's more than just the physical battle. There's, there's this whole other spiritual battle that I have not even tapped into. And, and you know, I'm... I think I'm just going to leave this stuff here. I've got to okay. get going. All right. But um, uh, you folks have a good day, all right? You take care. All right? Well, we'll see all right. you. Well, bye. Thanks for visiting, I think. Lift, lift, what lift, is that right, lift, 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 right, lift, 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 right. Wow. All right, then. Listen, it is so important for us to remember that the things that we see and hear and experience in this world, this is not the only world that we live in. There is a spiritual world that we walk in at the very same time as this physical world, and our enemy knows that we exist, and he has a plan to defeat us. And that, therefore, we must also have a plan to stand up to him and to defeat him. Because it is, whether we believe it or not, it is happening. So we need to jump in to what's going on in the spiritual realm. Um, if it feels like you are overwhelmed in battle, then here's the thing. You probably are. There are definitely times that we are completely surrounded and completely uh, overwhelmed by what's happening. Sickness, uh, car trouble, money trouble, friend trouble, relationships, uh, everything, projects that fall apart. Uh, over and over, it seems like there are enemies on every side, and sometimes we truly are surrounded. And that is when, just like Jehoshaphat, we take our position, 
we remember God's promises, we remember God's power, and we watch and see what God will do. Because when we say, God, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are on you, and when we mean it and we believe it, then he steps in in a miraculous way to help us. Um, one, of, one of my favorite verses in the Bible, I know, I know I say that a lot, I'm sorry, it's hard for me to choose a favorite, but one of my favorite verses is uh, also in Psalm. I really love the Psalms uh, when, when I just need something, a, a nugget to memorize. But Psalm 139 says, You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. I love that picture. Because you know what? I have heard people say that God won't give you more than you can handle. But that's a lie. He absolutely allows you to experience more than you can handle. The Bible says he won't let us be tempted beyond what we can handle. But of course he lets us experience more than we can handle. If we could handle it, we wouldn't turn to him. We need him, but we don't always realize that until we feel like we need him. So of course we're going to feel like we need him. Yes, it probably is impossible. That thing that you're standing against that you don't know if you're ever going to dig out from, you're not. It's impossible. But God, when you remember God's promises, when you remember God's power, and you hold on to that and you believe what he said, you believe that it's for you, it is amazing what can happen. Jesus promised, in this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Overcome? That word, we only use that word when there's an enemy. We only use that word when there's a battle. If we want to see Jesus overcome in our lives, if we want to experience victory in our lives, then we have to recognize that that comes through battle. Right? When, when America or any other country sends peacekeepers into another country, the only reason they're there as peacekeepers is because... There is unrest, there's battle, there's fighting. There's something that happens that requires peace. So when we need peace, when we need victory, we need to remember that that's because we're in the middle of a battle. And it's not only what we see and feel around us, but it is spiritual, right? And, and let, me, let me just tell you this. If you are not in the middle of a battle and you are not feeling overcome right now, take heart, you will, uh, but if you're not in the middle of it right now, then start to do these things already. Get prepared now. Because when battle comes is not the time to pick up the field guide. Right? I mean, our, you can have a state-of-the-art weapon, but if it stays under your bed until you need it, you won't be very prepared to use it when the enemy's in front of you. So we need to be prepared. We need to be in the word and praying and worshiping and experiencing his presence. So when the time comes... We can take our stand, right? If Jehoshaphat had turned to God for the first time when that army came, he would not have the faith it required to know that God was going to come through for him. We need to build that up, right? It is so very important. So listen, there is, there's a song that I have heard recently, and the refrain of the song says, uh, don't you tell me he can't do it, right? Don't you tell me he can't do it. Don't tell me that my God's not big enough, because he is big enough. And today I want to challenge you, are you ready? Are you ready to take your place and take your stand in the, in the spiritual battle that we are in? Are you ready to live up to your name as soldiers in the army of God? Are you ready to do what it takes to take your stand? Now, that means ready for battle. Are you ready for the battle that you're already in? I want everybody to close your eyes all across the room. Close your eyes for me. And I want you just to, just to be quiet a second. Just listen for what God might want to say to you. Our commander-in-chief loves us. Our commander-in-chief wants to speak to us. And sometimes we just have to be quiet for a minute and hear his voice. He's ready for you. If you're overwhelmed in battle right now, feeling like you're surrounded, God's not shaking his fist at you, wondering why you're, you are where you are. 
He's reaching a hand out to you and saying, take my hand, come with me, and watch what I will do for you. If you're not feeling surrounded and overwhelmed, maybe you are the answer to someone else's battle plan. Maybe he's getting ready to use you to intervene for someone else. Are you ready? Are you ready to take your stand where he wants you to be? As you listen for what God is saying, when you can say, I'm ready to take my stand, I want you to stand up. Okay? If you're not ready yet, don't stand up. As soon as you're ready to say, I'm ready to take my stand, I'm ready to take my place, then I want you to stand up. See, what we do in the physical is a cue to the spiritual. It's, it's almost a prophetic thing that we can do. As we stand up in the physical, it reminds our hearts, I'm ready to stand up in the spiritual. So if you're ready to take your stand, if you're ready to be a part of the battle that's going on around you, then stand up. And I want us to just pray African style. If you don't know what that means, that's right. I'm going to explain it to you. In Africa... Here's how we pray. Everybody prays out loud at the same time. If that just struck terror in your heart, be still. It's okay. Okay? If you're worried about what somebody else is going to think of you, don't, because they're too worried about what you're thinking about them. To Right? I mean, I, I learned nobody's nearly as concerned about what I'm doing as I am. So don't be concerned about what other people think. I want you to talk to your commander-in-chief. And I want you to listen to your commander-in-chief. We're going to pray all together at the same time that God would show us the next step. Father God, we stand before you, an army ready to be mobilized. We know that you use people that are ready. Father, we make room in our hearts. We make room in this place. Do what you want to do. Reveal to us what is the next step. What is the next right thing for me to do in this plan that you already have. I want to do what you're doing. And if you are already busy in battle, then I want to be busy with you. What is the next thing that you have for me? Lord God, reveal to us the next step in our families, in our workplace, in our discipleship. Lord, what is the next step that you have for me? I want to be
glad that he's working even when I don't realize it. The times when it seems like everything else is working against me, I need to know that he's still working. And maybe you need to hear that today. Maybe that's the only thing that really needs to stick with us today. He's still working. He still wants to work in our lives, our homes, and our families. Can you just bow your head for a minute? I just want to, I'm going to see one just a moment, I promise. Father, I just pray you speak to our hearts. Oh God, that you would just help us to see that you are working, to trust that you're working despite what we're facing. Lord, maybe for that one, it's going through something with their marriage, with their business, something with their children, their finances, their health. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just trust that you're working. We just believe in faith that you're working. We declare your, your word over our situation. We say it, we say it, that you're working. We take it care of in Jesus' name. at all from the Lord today. If you don't know him as your personal Savior, you've never made him the Lord of your life, or maybe you didn't, you broke fellowship, and now you realized it's been a long time since you really believed he was working in your life, and maybe you feel that tug right now. I want you to know, we'll, we want to pray with you. We want to help you. If you're watching online, we want to reach out to you. If you'd like to let us know that you've made a decision, we'd like prayer, you can, you can text us. I'm ready to make a decision. I'm ready to turn a 180. I'm going to go a different direction. If you would text us at 313131, send us that, that message, 180. We'll get, we'll get in touch with you. We'll be there to pray for you and help you with anything you need. In fact, if you, want, you, you don't have to put your first and last name, but you can if you'd like to. If you'll send that to us, someone will get in touch with you. Second thing is when we dismiss in a few minutes, there will be people here, our altar team, who are prayed up and ready to minister in anything that you might be facing whether it's to know Jesus or to help you stand in agreement for a battle you're going through, something you're facing. They want to they pray with you, and they'll be here. But would you just be seated just for a moment? What a sweet presence. Do you just sense the presence of God in this place right now? Isn't it neat that God has all kinds of different ministries that we get to experience, that here we are all the way on the other side of the world from where Jeff and Abby and their family usually do ministry, and when they told me they wanted, they would be willing to do a kids or a, a family service. I said, "Yeah, we're all about that because that's two things we love: is missions. We love kids ministry. We love family ministry. So they wanted to do a family service. I love that because this is kind of how they do service. Because as you heard in their church, you know, for for about thirty or so adults, they have about around hundred kids." And so that's how they do ministry. You know, we have to relate a little different to kids. And I was thinking while they were sharing, and I said, I met them a few years ago, and I'm just really excited about what they're doing. Can you imagine having God call you? And it's one thing to say, okay, we're going to go, and we're going to go work and help run an orphanage for babies. I mean, how many people, especially some of you ladies, would suffer for Jesus if you could take care of babies and love them and just be there for when they don't have parents. I mean, a lot of, we, we love that kind of stuff, right? But then to find out when you got there that it wasn't what you expected at all and they had to close the place down and government regulations changed, funding changed. And they knew God called them. And I got to tell you something. Conventional thinking, believe it or not, in ministry is you don't make money off kids. I mean, even though most kids don't, don't, do a whole lot of financial support for the ministry. And so, honestly, sometimes in the past, churches wouldn't do a lot of ministry for kids because they, they couldn't pay for it. And this is magnified many times over around the world in places where they don't even believe kids can know Jesus. Many times they're just kind of an afterthought. So kids' ministry in Africa is still a new thing, even though we've had friends and we've been doing it there for about 20 years. It's still a new phenomenon. And so see God not only doing ministry among the kids, but a church that's mostly reach, reaching kids, you know, they got to have faith. You know what? Not only just kids, but kids that are already come from dire poverty. You heard how many things that they face, 70-something percent people that live in their little 
area have AIDS, have HIV. So I, I believe we need to do something. I believe I would like for us to help them today. They didn't ask for anything. They didn't say, hey, when it comes to you, you can take us off. They didn't ask us for anything. He just said, in fact, the last time they came, you may remember, they went to kids' church. They did praise kids for us. They just wanted to do something to be a blessing. But I'd like for us to do something. I'd like for us to make a difference. In fact, I know as they've been home, they've had cancellations with churches. People get sick and they close down. They can't have them come in. And they just had a cancellation this week coming up in a week or two. How about if we make up the difference? How about if we bless them? Because, you know, we can't sow into a ministry like this and not receive harvest. I want to see families grow. I want to see children reached. I want to see lives put back together. So what better ground to put in seed into than that kind of ministry? So if you'd like to give, and I want us to do something special. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to pick them up on a monthly basis and, and connect with them. In fact, we're, we've already begun talking to them about taking a team over there to work in Freedom Park. Would you like to do that? Wouldn't that be cool? I see, I see people already going. We're going to do that. So we'll be telling you more about that in a few months. But if you'd like to give, support them. When you, when you tithe today, you're going to help support them because we tithe to missionaries. Off the tithe, we give and support missionaries, 40-something families. We've just added hunts to that list. When you give to things like Kingdom Builders, you're helping support missions and special projects for missionaries and things around the world as well as locally. But today, I want us to do above that. I want us to give them a specific offering. First of all, we believe that when God brings us a ministry gift, that we're responsible for that gift. And so we want to be good stewards of the ministry that was released here today. Our kids were touched, but I believe your life was touched. How many of you say, you know what, that, that really touched my heart today? Sure. Absolutely. Amen. So let's do that. If you'd like to give a couple ways you can do that. You can give with an offering envelope. We have boxes throughout the building. You can drop that in. If you need an envelope, you raise your hand. Just designate whatever you're giving to the hunts. That's easy to remember. Or you can go online, go to our website, praisefamily.church. Click on give, and it'll take you through that. Or you can text the word giving, 313131, and it'll also lead you through the right prompts to be able to do that. But whatever you do, let's all do something. Some of us may can do a lot extra today, maybe more than you would normally do, and God's really tugging on your heart. What we found out is we have different kinds of ministry and different ways God moves in our church, and different things touch people's lives differently. So if God's speaking to you, it's important you listen and do what he says because that's how he meets needs, and I believe the needs can be more than met today. Amen? Don't you appreciate them this morning? Let's just let them know we appreciate them and what they're doing, how they've so given their lives and sown their lives. I love Africa. I love Africa. If God told me to live there, I'd live there. But i got to tell you, I like living in Alabama and visiting Africa and coming home. Thank God for people that will take that. I want to read you a scripture real quickly. I think you guys have that from Romans 10. This hit me during the first service, and I sent a thing to God saying, hey, put the scripture up for me. He says, but how can people call on him for help if they've not yet believed, and how can they believe in one they've not yet heard of, and how can they hear the message of life if there is no one there to proclaim it, and how can the message be proclaimed if messengers have yet to be sent? That's why the scriptures say, how welcome is the arrival of those proclaiming the joyful news of peace and of good things to come. Not only is it a joyful thing for those who hear the peace, but we're so supposed to be joyful and thankful for those who are willing to use their own feet to take the good news. So we send them in our place, and that's what we're doing today. And I'm thankful for Jeff and Abby and their children for surrendering to the call. God bless them for that. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. For every gift and every giver. Lord, we pray that the needs that they have will be more than met. And in the name of Jesus, your glory would be seen. I pray that the power and the anointing would increase, that they would have favor with government officials and, and leaders, Lord, the, the doors that need to open for the things they have to do that's so unusual, Lord. Lord, God, that they would have supernatural provision because the people they're ministering to themselves might not have it. But, Lord, we know you're more than able. You're more than able. We thank you for that, Lord. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Would you stand to your feet right now? Can we just give God, give God praise for us be givers for being blessed enough to be a part of this? Amen. God bless you.
We're going to be dismissed in just a moment as we as we are. If you want prayer for anything, if you gave your heart to Jesus or would like to, you come forward. Our prayer team meet you. If you have prayer needs of any kind, you need someone to pray with you, they will be here. You, as everybody goes that direction, you come this way. All right, God bless you. We love you. You're dismissed. Come on if you want prayer. We'd love to pray with you. Have a great day.